everyone welcome to the third lecture in the series in this video again we are going to see 10 questions uh, so let's get started and before we start i would really appreciate it if you could smash that like button drop me a comment and share this free program with anyone who might need it so the first question is the flexural tensile strength of m25 concrete so flexural strength is equal to 0.7 times root fck just that simple so if it is m25 then it is a perfect square then no problem so root 25 which will give you 5 5 into 0.7 the answer is 3.5 newton per mm square and if they ask you the modulus of elasticity then we have already seen it in the previous video the uh, formula for that is 5000 root fck so for m25 it will be 5000 into 5 which will give you 25000 that's it so very easy so let's go to the next question the cylinder strength is how much times that of cube so here let us understand the question cylinder so the typical dimension of cylinder is the height is 300 mm the diameter is 150 i'm sorry for this awful handwriting and when we come to a cube so the dimension of the cube, the side of the cube is going to be 150 mm. So both these will be tested in CTM, that is compression testing machine. And from that we will find our compressive strength, right? So what they are asking, what is the cylinder strength when it is compared to the cube? The cylinder strength is only 0.8 times of that of cube. This is because of the slenderness ratio. If you compare the slenderness ratio here, it is... 300 by 150 which will which is equal to 2 and for cube it is 150 by 150 which is equal to 1 so you can see the slenderness ratio is almost twice as that of cube and because of this slenderness ratio our uh, compressive strength right it reduces so you have like two questions can be asked here what uh, the first is this question and second is why it is so and the reason is because of slenderness ratio you can also say it is also because of the size effect and as you can see uh, these both right the cylinder and cube they both are tested in laboratory conditions uh, they are also you know cured in the laboratory conditions that is the quality of the cubes is going to be high and even in this case when the quality is going to be this much big that is even if it is quality control there is going to be like around 20 percentage reduction in the strength so uh, imagine how much that would affect when you cast a beam that too in side conditions you may not be able to cure it properly or uh, something like that that is the reason why uh, we always take the compressive strength right we don't take if it is like uh, if 20 newton per mm square is my compressive strength we don't take 20 for our design considerations we take only 0.67 times fck that is 0.67 times 20 so you would have seen this factor 0.67 uh, in so many places this is the reason the reason is because of the size effect and the slenderness ratio that will be happening in our cubes because we are testing for compressive strength only for cube but in reality it may be of any shape so let's go to the next question the explanation of IS456 is given in where? So we have like IS is Indian standards. We have another type called uh, SP which is special publications. So for IS456, uh, the explanation is given in SP16. And SP34, it, it gives guidelines for RCC. But SP16, it gives explanation for RCC and PCC. And another type of publication you should keep in mind is SP6 which is for steel design. So going to the next question, what is the characteristic compressive strength? So now I'm casting my cube and I'm testing for the cubes. So say I'm taking like 100 cubes and testing it for the same uh, uh, mixed design ratio. Let me take for M30 M uh, testing. Okay, I have casted like 100 cubes here. So if I plot a graph between the number of cubes, which we call it as, it is also denoted as frequency, right? frequency and the strength because I'm getting strength only from my CTM machine uh, experiment that is the compressive strength my curve will be something like this so what this curve means is that uh, this is my strength in increasing order and if I take this part this is my mean strength I'm denoting it by FM this means that most of my test results this whole value I can say that this whole value is 100 percentage 
so most of my test results say these percentage they lie near to my mean strength now let us come to our question our question what is the characteristic compressive strength so giving you the definition characteristic compressive strength is the strength below which not more than 5 percentage of the test result should fall so if we take at this graph we can say that uh, this is like 50 percentage and this is 100 percentage of my strength so my 5 percentage will be somewhere here right this is my 5 percentage of results strength value is called as my fck so this is only called as characteristic compressive strength going to the next question what is the characteristic compressive load so the previous question was about strength here it is about load so again let us take the same distribution so here let us take on y axis it is frequency x axis this time it is going to be loads because we are not considering strength here they have asked load so we are interested only in load here so again uh, the distribution of the curve will be something like this and in the previous video we took here that is 5 percentage of strength results so the characteristic compressive load is the load that uh, that has like 95 percentage chances that the applied load will be lesser than that which means that my characteristic compressive strength will be somewhere here which means uh, 95 percentage this is 95 percentage this is 5 percentage 95 percentage of the time the applied load will lie below this value so this is my value so this is i call as my pck let me denote this as pck and this is my uh, pm that is mean load right in the previous case fck is the value below which 5 percentage will fall in this case uh, the characteristic compressive load is the value for which 5 percentage of the results would fall so something i forgot to tell you here is uh, using this characteristic strength only we will arrive at the target strength so if you had uh, watched my uh, m20 design according to the latest code that is 2019 code then you would have known that for mixed design we will find the target strength and this target strength it is given by uh, fck plus 1.65 times standard deviation so how how did we get this 1.65 it can be explained in this graph again so this is my uh, let me draw it again so this is my graph and this is my f mean i know my fck value and i have to find my f mean from this formula uh, i know my fck value i need to find f mean so from this binomial distribution we can arrive at this uh, distance as 1.65 times standard deviation so if you look at the formula it is it makes sense now f mean is equal to fck that is this value plus 1.65 times standard deviation so that is how you got this formula now uh, if you come uh, to characteristic compressive load here also we can find the mean load just like the previous step uh, we found the target mean strength here we can find the target mean load but the difference here is this is my pck this is my mean so here uh, the again i'm drawing the curve so this distance is again since this is 5 percentage this distance is again 1.65 times standard deviation but the catch here is this is my pck this is my pm so the catch here is pck is higher than pm so it is pck minus 1.65 times standard deviation to the next question to control the deflection the l by d ratio for simply supported beam ssb means simply supported beam is what so let us look for all the conditions so according to is 456 up to the span of 10 meter cantilever is 7 that is the l by d ratio it is 7 for cantilever 20 for simply supported and for continuous it is 26 so for up to 10 meter it will be like this say i am asking for a, a simply supported beam of 20 meter i need to know what is my uh, l by d ratio to control deflection then you have to go to point b where for, uh, for spans above 10 meter value a may be multiplied by 10 by span in meters except for cantilever for which deflection calculation should be made separately so now i have my simply supported beam so for 20 meter i already know the base value for say, uh, 10 meter is 20 into given here it is uh, uh, 10 by span so 10 by 20 so this will be like so my answer will be 10 so my l by d ratio for a simply supported beam of 20 meter length is restricted to 10 
right? From this, we'll, we use this to find the depth of the section. So, going to the next uh, question, are shear reinforcements provided in beams? So, are they provided? The answer is yes, and they are provided in the form of stirrups. So, for beams, we'll just, uh, when designing the beams, we'll just design the uh, main reinforcement. But in reality, we will be providing stirrups to hold them in place and the stirrups will act as a shear reinforcement. So going to the next question, the maximum area of tension reinforcement in beam shall not exceed what? So they have asked for tension reinforcement in beam. Note it, it is for beam and it is tension reinforcement. The answer is given in IS456, the maximum area of tension reinforcement shall not exceed 0.04 BD. So, this BD is what we call the gross sectional area. If it is, uh, D is the whole depth of the section, B is the width of the section and 0 0.04 can be written as 4 percentage. So, I can say that the maximum area of tension reinforcement in beam is 4 percentage of the cross, cross sectional area. So, going to the next question, uh, the last question we saw, what is the tension reinforcement? In this uh, question, let us see what is the compression reinforcement for beam. It shall not exceed what? So again, the answer is the maximum area of compression reinforcement for beam is again 0 0.04 BD. It is the same. So you can keep this in mind. For both uh, for beams, both the tension and compression reinforcement, it is 4% of the gross cross-sectional area. Now let's go to a tricky question. The maximum area of tension and compression reinforcement in beam shall not exceed what? So we know that uh, for tension, we know it is 4% of BD. And for compression, we know it is again 4% of BD. So, when they are both added together, when they are uh, togetherly considered, then the answer is 8% of gross cross-sectional area. That is, with the compression and tension acting together, we can take uh, the area of reinforcement, that is the maximum area of reinforcement can be 8% of gross cross-sectional area. That is your answer. So, we come to the end of, end of this video. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do like and please do subscribe to the channel. It will motivate me a lot. Thank you so much for listening guys. I will see you in the next video. Bye.